It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Huddle up, huddle up, huddle up. On Giants.com. Here we go, here we go. And the Giants mobile Get them in there, let's go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Welcome to another edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. We continue our player interview series. We conducted these interviews at the end of mandatory minicamp. We talked about the offseason and looked ahead to 2023 a little bit. Today's position, interior offensive line, guards and tackles. We're going to start with the guards and get to the centers. So we're going to have Mark Lewinsky, Shane Lemieux, Josh Azudu, Ben Bredesen, Hassenhauer, and John Michael Schmitz. So let's get started, and we're going to lead off with the vet of the group, Giants starting right guard, Mark Lewinsky. All right, now we're joined by veteran offensive lineman, Mark Lewinsky. Mark, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. Feeling good. Can't complain. Getting a little little older in the years, but feeling the best I have, so can't complain. Well, as you've gotten in the league and you've yeah. become more of a veteran, how has your offseason process kind of changed? Um, it's definitely been a lot shorter and shorter as, uh, you know, the family life develops. Um, kids change of, everything. Yeah, kids change everything. <laughs> so, you know, we have a three and one year old now, so that's where a lot of the time is is put in. Um, so you know, it's it's the grind in the morning of working out, then get home and and uh, enjoy the family as much as possible, um, and try to get some rest in between there. But that really doesn't happen. So we, you know, we try to keep it try to keep it as exciting as possible. Um, you know, little activities and trips and stuff like that in the off season, and get refreshed for the season that's ahead. Yeah, being home with the kids is, is a different type of workout, right? Yeah, I, I think that's actually something that's kind of keep me a little bit feeling of young, is because it's nonstop moving. So when I do, you know, when I come into the building and have work and stuff, it actually feels a little bit easier uh, mentally and and not as, uh, you know, it's not as tough. So. I, w- I give credit to all the parents out there, especially ones that are working full, you know, full jobs and and having, uh, you know, just being a parent at, at the end of the day as well. All right, second year, obviously, same coaches, same scheme, but mm-hmm. faces always change, right? Yeah. So how has it been trying to integrate some of the new faces into that offensive line as a vet that probably is one of the guys that takes a leadership role? Um, that? Fortunately, the guys that we have that are new have experience behind them or, you know, our guys that um, were higher picks or, you know, however – you know, the guys that have experience behind them and in different in that sense. Um, so I think it's just building um, more of the social interaction and make sure they were all on the same same page, communication. Um, physically, I like where the group's at. Um, we put a lot of a lot of work in the off season. Um, there's a lot of competition that was between us. You know, if somebody throws somebody throws on a, a you know a plate, everybody's looking. It's like, oh, we gotta get that. You know what I mean? So I was very happy how this off season went, where uh, we were able to compete with one another in that sense, and we put in a lot of time um, with a lot of field work that we had, um, and we were able to build a little bit more um, than just knowing what the plays and w- or what the name of a play was and stuff like. I've, you know, a lot of last year at this time was just kind of understanding. Uh, terminology and stuff at least we we're already at that point and now we can get more into the scheme of plays the the little details of plays um, a lot more in detail than just kind of just knowing where what if we were supposed to go left and right and how I know this isn't real football yet for you guys because you know mm-hmm. I have pads on you're not hitting anybody but did right. you see a, a little bit of a different Evan Neal coming back in his second year everyone talks about what yeah. a huge difference it is you know for a second year guy as opposed to a yeah rookie. Um, yeah you can see that as soon as he got back, um, he was making that progress throughout the season. So it wasn't, you know, it was, you know, some guys kind of just uh, settle down and kind of just stay the same or whatever. He was actually uh, getting better as the week went and, and as the season went along. So, um, you know, the the transition, if I would have to look back when he first got into where he's at now to see how big of a, you know, I can see that because I've been around him. But somebody that might have just met him at the end of the season to now, you know he's he's transitioned, but he it's not he's put in the work through the whole time. It's not like he just just put it all in in the off season. You can see that he's just continually gotten better as this uh, process has gone since the day one that he's gone in the building, which I you know I appreciate because um, he you know he makes sure that I'm in line as well. We're we're always competing, and we're always uh, trying to make one another better, and we're able to put a little bit more time in just the details and and the fundamentals of how we fit things and how we communicate with one another as well. Not only, you know, how, how much work it was put in the off season. 
Final question. Give me a feel for the rookie, John Michael Schmitz. I, I feel like he's like central casting for Midwestern offensive lineman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. He kind of just looks the part, right? Uh, yeah, but he's also um, he's very comfortable um, in his skin, and you can see that he's, you know, he he's he's not afraid to just uh, say something or ask questions. Um, and I feel like that's going to carry over to when it, things get hard in the season that he can even – uh, have the guys that are older held accountable and and not be afraid. Um, he's he's you can tell that all the progress that he's making, um, especially just picking up the offense and understanding. You can tell day by day. You know there might be days. You know when we first got out here, it was like we got a whole new cadence system. So you know it, w- it was. You know, it was kind of in between on if he was going to pick it up. And then the next day he's like, you, th- you know, you thought it might have been a bad day, but he picked it up right away and then moved on to the new thing. It, you know, so it, there wasn't any back step. It was just keep moving forward on all the things that he needs to do. Um, and it'll be exciting once we are able to get a little bit more physical on where he's at as well in that regard. Mark, good stuff. Best luck yeah. this year. Yeah, thank you. And now we're joined by Giants offensive lineman Shane Lemu. Shane, how are you, man? Good, 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 good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate so um, I know it's been driving us because I talked in the cafeteria. Yeah. So you had another year, you had to deal with injuries again. Yep. So yes. how have you been able to try to kind of mentally fight through all this stuff? Yeah, uh, I think just I really I have really good support system around me. Um, just knowing that, you know, looking to the future and not really what's behind in the past and just, you know, taking everything day by day, you know, getting my rehab, getting my body stronger and uh, just taking like a more – whole body approach to like what what are my problem areas you know where where can I prevent injuries in the future and um just doing the best I can to put the work in you know to be able to get my body ready for the test you know in the season and the training camp and stuff so hopefully that's all behind us and I'm I'm feeling good now so yeah I, I that that's great to hear. And now yeah. you're in another competition, right? Yep. And you have a lot yep. of guys that are competing in that left guard spot. Yeah. So just tell me what your kind of mental approach is to yeah, that. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, this off season I really focus on being able to play any position that's asked to me. Um, you know, I, I, whether it's snapping the ball at center or playing left or right guard, I think I'm I've, I put in the work to be able to feel comfortable all three interior spots. Uh, you know, and it's just again taking you know taking things day by day. Um, you know, being being in the moment and, you know, and focusing on, you know, what I need to do to improve every single day. So I don't think really the, the process changes because that's that's how I've always really operated, but just more emphasis on the details. So, How has it been trying to do more stuff at center and kind of bringing yeah, that versatility it's different. to it? You know, it's, it's definitely different. I never played center before, but um, I've always been told that I'm a natural center. And um, just getting the snaps down, that's the biggest thing because that's not something I never had to do before. Right. And then it's a lot more vocal, you know, vocally challenging because you're you're running the show up front of course and uh it's it's you know it's a different it's a more of a mental game rather than a guard and uh it's obviously you know it's different but i'm adjusting well to it so far so yeah what are your main goals this off season and yeah. your training and kind of coming back trying to be a better guy you know it's i've taken i've taken a lot of time off and just getting my feet in the ground my you know pad level lower hands better um and just getting the best shape possible to get ready to go to training camp and uh be able to perform so yeah shane good stuff man we yeah. appreciate the time thank you very much all right, and now we stick on the offensive line. We're going to talk to Giants guard, left guard, I guess, Josh yes. Azudu. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're in a competition now. So yes. so what's your mentality this offseason in that competition to try to earn that starting spot at left guard? It's just, you know, doing everything right, learning from my first year, you know, in the league, and also just staying um, healthy too as well too. How tough was that injury last year, dealing with it? Because it seemed like you were making a lot of progress, and then it, it all kind of just got derailed for you. Yeah, it was very tough, very tough. I felt, yeah, I felt the, the same way. I felt like I was actually starting to get comfortable, and then that j- j- just came out of n- nowhere. But everything happens for a reason, though. So I might not know the reason now, but I w- will, though, soon. All right, so now you're heading into this offseason. You went into the shop this offseason trying to get better. Mm-hmm. What were your main goals and, and what your focus was and where you want to become a better football player this year? Just getting more s- stronger, I would say. You know, dealing with my injury I had last year, I couldn't really – I didn't feel strong. So now I was my main offseason is just get, getting more s- stronger and also just like – just like kind of like having that – confidence you know that I had in college getting it back so I have it now too you mentioned lessons learned as a rookie when you went back and looked at your rookie year what were some of the lessons that that you kind of took to heart that really you think kind of made you a better player 
I was just, I, I feel like the big lesson I learned was just, I was just playing too frantic my first couple of games. And then as the time, you know, went on, you know, it's it started to feel, you know, just like I'm fo- football. Like, I just felt like I was trying to speed things up when I didn't need to speed things up. Yeah, you know, the old expression is rookies always are drinking from a fire hose, right? There's so yes. much water mm-hmm. coming out and it's just impossible to do it. Do you feel like now that you're kind of starting over again in year two that it's not a fire hose anymore? And it, oh, and it, no, no, no. It's not a fire hose no more. It's way – it's more like a water hose now, you know, <laughs> in a way. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I guess finally then, um, as you've kind of been here working in the spring, how much have you kind of picked up, you know, working behind Bredesen and, and some of the other veterans at guard and, and just kind of work? How, how do you guys work as a group where you're competing but also helping each other at the same they time? They help me. They've been helping me so much. They've helped me last year and they're helping me this year all because, like, they've still been in the league, you know, sure. longer than I have and learned so many things on their way and they always teaching me giving me insight on just different things you know so i'm very thankful to have them too josh good stuff man best luck this year and we're Uh, rooting for you man yes thank you too all right now we're joined by giants offensive lineman ben bredesen ben how are you man doing well doing well how about yourself doing well so i know you've done it before but you're probably leaning into center a little bit more now than maybe you had previously how's that going or, or am i wrong no i mean uh as an interior lineman you have to be able to you know play all three spots at any given time so um obviously center is included in that um you know i've done a, a good amount of that good amount of guard so sure. feeling comfortable uh in in any spot so we have sean o'hara on our broadcast team mm-hmm. so i always talk to him about this so for you what's the biggest technique change you have to make when you're at center instead of guard um the one thing i found you know everything happens so much closer you're on the ball you know at guard you can kind of you can you can creep a little bit off the line of scrimmage you're still on it obviously but you get a little bit um at center everybody's right on you so um you have to attack blocks a little bit differently um sometimes it's an advantage sometimes it's a disadvantage so uh, you know learning through that with experience and growing um you know I'm, i'm getting the hang of it Sean always talks about the guy shading to his snap hand, mm-hmm. and that's kind of the biggest challenge is you got to get that hand up really quick, right? Yeah, that's obviously a, a disadvantage part. You know, a guy, they know you're going to snap it with your right hand, and they're going to line up right there. And, um, you know, the first thing you got to do is get the ball back to the quarterback. So once you take care of that, you just got to try to get that thing back up as fast as possible. Now, you're kind of involved in almost like a two-tier competition, right? You're at center, you're doing stuff there. Then you have left guard as well where you're working a lot there. Mm-hmm. So how are you kind of split your time? Is it splitting time or are all the techniques and learning the plays you can kind of absorb what you have to do at left guard and center at the same time? Uh, mentally, yeah. I mean, mentally, it's just absorbing all the same, you know, especially like an advantage of when you're playing center, you have to know what everybody is doing. So yeah, that translates pretty easily to, you know, when you're moving to guard or, or staying at center. Um as far as technique goes, you know, like I touched on earlier, being an interior guy, you got to be able to do all three. So, you know, it is that's just the that's just part of the job, and uh, you know, I enjoy it. It's uh, there's some slight technique differences between playing center or guard, um, and depending on what you know what the day's work is, um, you're just attacking it every single day. So. I love the mm-hmm. dynamics of the offensive line room. Mm-hmm. Take take me inside how you guys are helping each other, but also competing at the same time, and how that how that works. It's it's the best room in the building uh, on every team. It always it is. always is. You know, um, now we have a very selfless group, very tight group this year. Um, you know, there's there's not a bad apple in there, and um, we're all very willing to help each other. And you know, there's professional there's a high level of professionalism involved as well. So you know, no one's out trying to undercut anybody everyone's always trying to help and all we care about is putting you know the best unit on the field and trying to win games talk about the progress you've seen from a couple of the young guys josh azudu from Mm -hmm. last year to this year and and how much you've seen him grow i think he made a a big jump during the season yeah sure you know and i think from the end of last season until now you know he's bigger he's stronger um he's more confident and you know i feel like the game slowed down for him i feel like he's he's done a, a good job um you know Evan, same thing. Evans, Evan went through his rookie year, and he found um, 
a lot of things that worked for him and you know for he's making adjustments throughout the off season as well same thing with him is you know the game's slowing down his confidence is going up so um you know they're doing well marcus mckeithen obviously yeah. he got hurt last year but um he's got a great attitude he's attacking the rehab and you know i don't see any issues any issues with him either so uh the young guys are doing well and you have a rookie in the room too, and John the rookie. Michael Schmidt. Almost, almost left John Michael out. Um, you know, he was in college for six years though, so he's really not that young. You know what I mean? I, I know it's a, it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic calling him, you know, the rookie, the young guy, and I'm a year older than him. So you know, <laughs> he's older than Evan, and you know, I'm a year older than him. So um, no, he's he's been a great addition to the room. Great ad, um, humble guy, works hard. You know, does all the things right. Um, he seems like central no casting, like Midwestern offensive lineman. Yes, guy. absolutely. <laughs> like if you were to draw it up in a movie, that's the guy that you would pick, and that's the character right there. So, um, you know, it's nice to have another Midwestern guy in the in the room, and uh, you know, we've hit it off. Is it weird to go from like young guy to now? Oh, I'm vet guy mentoring young guys now. That, that's been a transition I've been working through. <laughs> um, I've always been, you know, the young guy in the, in right. the NFL room, and you know, we just have a young room this year, and. Um, the fact is, you know, I'm going into year four, and I guess that, you know, we're coming about that time when that transition's happening. So, um, it's you know, it's not bad at all. I, I enjoy it, and uh, you know, I love, you know, I love working with with all the guys in the room. Um, but yeah, for having that realization was a little, a little strange this year. Ben, good stuff, my man. Absolutely. Appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, and now we're joined by Giants offensive lineman J.C. Hassenhauer. J.C., let's start here. Why'd you decide to come to the Giants this off season? Yeah, it was, a, it was a great opportunity, um, you know, working with Bobby and working with uh, Dave's, um, as well as Coach Kafka as well. Um, you know, I think I think it's the best fit as far as offensive scheme and having that familiarity with Dave's from uh, my last year at Alabama, um, just as well as uh, Coach Johnson trying to learn from him as and the other guys in the room. Um, I think it'll be a good op- opportunity this year. How much different is Dave's now from when you knew him back in Alabama? Oh, a little bit. I think uh, a little less stress. I know working <laughs> under working under Saban, that's uh, that's no easy task. So, um, you know, I think he's I think he's definitely embraced his head coach role, and he's doing a great job. How does the scheme and, and what the Giants do fit and compare to what you were asked to do early in your career? Oh, uh, very similar, very similar stuff. I mean, the game of football is pretty pretty simple. It's it's players and coaches really make it complex, but. At the end of the day, inside zones, inside zone, outside zones, outside zone. Every team runs the same stuff. Um, as I said before, it's kind of a copycat league. Um, so you know, it's 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 all the same stuff. Football, is football. What have you done more of? More more zone stuff, more gap stuff in in terms of the running game. Yeah, um, every team should have a good mix. Uh, mm-hmm. I'd say a little bit, maybe a little bit more zone for me. Um, but you know, at the same time, I'm versatile in, in gap. I know in my previous experience in Pittsburgh, we were pretty heavy in gap scheme. Um, you know, so I was, I was able to show that I could I could play in those systems too. And that's what everyone tells me too with the Giants is that they run every run scheme you got. So you yep. kind of have to be ready to do everything here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some teams they they heavily rely on like maybe an outside zone kind of right. like pro style like back in the day. Um, gap schemes coming a little bit more popular. Um, you get kind of bigger, more physical offensive defensive linemen. You want to move more towards the gap scheme. But uh, for some of the guys that are more athletic, you know, zone might fit them a little bit better. Um, but at the end of the day, every team is going to run both, so you got to be prepared to, to um, handle both. What has it been trying to learn um, the other offensive linemen? As a guy, you know, you're playing center, you kind of have to be able to communicate and you know get every, everybody together. How has it been trying to kind of figure out the group? Yeah, it's good. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of that stuff comes with time, um, a lot of patience, a lot of time off the field as well. Um, you know, hanging out with guys, um, you know, at, at the house. You know, going on uh, trips, kind of, kind of going to dinners and everything like that. So, a lot of that stuff is just untangible things that you know you can't coach, you sure. can't force. It's got to all come naturally. So we've been we've been doing a great job of that as a group. I feel like of kind of all meshing together. And now, what are your goals here? You, training camp's going to start in a few weeks. You coming in? Uh, what are your main goals heading into the season for you personally? Yeah, I mean, the main team goal is to win. You know, every year, you know, we're we're focused on one thing. That's winning the Super Bowl. Um, so you know, we're going to do everything possible to to accomplish that. JC, nice to meet you, man. Nice Best of luck. You. Appreciate you. And now we're joined by Giants rookie center John Michael Schmitz. John Michael, what's going on, man? Nothing much. I mean, just taking it one day at a time and enjoying the process of things, getting around my uh, teammates and being in a building. And it's just been a pleasure so far. So, so we talked to you when you got here a little bit, you did your press conference and everything, and yeah. now they've turned the fire hose on and you're trying to drink from <laughs> it. So how has it been? <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, just taking it one day at a time. Uh, you're going to fail. And Phelan's growing. 
uh, each and every day, and you just can't get frustrated with the process of um, you're just not going to know it right off the bat. And um, that's all about the like, – like I said earlier, it's all about failing and growing each and every day. So you had a lot of snaps at center in college. You're very experienced coming to the league. How much do you think that's going to help you hit the ground with your feet running a little bit so you don't have maybe as big of an adjustment period as maybe some of the other rookies coming in? Yeah, I mean, I would just say experience is one thing, um, uh, especially getting all those snaps. Um, I mean, right now it, we're, we're at the next level. It doesn't really mean anything. We're, we're, we're in the NFL. Um, nothing's proven. Uh, nothing's guaranteed, and you got to go out there and earn it each and every day. So, now you have a lot more responsibility than your typical offensive lineman as the center. You have to organize, you need to make calls, and do all that stuff. So, how has that been coming along, working with veterans and the other guys around you to making sure everyone's on the same pitch? Yeah, I mean, we got a special group of guys. They've been helping me a lot um, this through these OTAs and just showing me the ropes. Uh, getting me adjusted to uh, what the room is and welcoming in their uh, in the room. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, being uh, with them all the way. And um, at the end of the day, it's my job to earn their trust and uh, be in the position that uh, put them in the best position when I'm on the field. Uh, so, yeah. We were talking to your head coach, P.J. Fleck, on our Giants Huddle podcast. It hasn't aired yet. It's going to air shortly. Um, and he just talked about – you know, your development as a leader at Minnesota. What does that mean to you, and why is it important for you to, to kind of be that leader, especially in the position that you play? Yeah, I mean, you got to be a leader if you're a center. You're the one that's in charge. you got to be in command. Um, you got to set the tone from the start. Um, how you play, how you uh, hold yourself, how you make the calls, and you're confident, I mean, that just shows the guys around you, like, they believe in you and uh, they're ready to go to war with you. So, I'm sure you're tired about answering questions about how you snap the ball, so I have a detailed question for you <laughs> in regard to that real briefly. That's just under center, right, or is that shotgun too? Do you snap it the same way both, or do you adjust to the – Adjust it under center. Yeah, so under center, it's 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 it, it's your Normal, way. yeah. yeah or then, no, dead ball snap is when it's uh, in shotgun. In shotgun, got it, okay. Yes. So it's one easy way. That's what I thought. But people yeah. people tend to just put it all into one basket. And I'm like, I think it's – I don't think it's it's the no. same snap, the same – that doesn't make any sense. All right. That's what I thought. Perfect. <laughs> um, what are your goals from now until the start of training camp so you kind of come in here ready to go in August? Yeah. Um, I mean, the one thing for me is, um, like I said earlier, is gain trust of not only the old line room but the offense, the whole team in general, that, um, that I can be that guy. And – I would say, I mean, one thing is, uh, one thing that I uh, put on myself is to master that playbook, master um, everything, and so I can be out there and be confident in my calls and take command and be that leader on the field and off the field and connect this this uh, O-line and make it one of the best. So um, just taking it one day at a time and uh, continuing to grow, continuing to grow, and uh, there's going to be failing, there's going to be failure, and um, I mean, just how you respond to it is everything. Yeah, let me just follow up quick because you mentioned being ready in the playbook, right? The Giants run everything in terms of run game, right? They do gap. They mm-hmm. do outside zone, inside zone. I know you did a lot of outside zone in Minnesota, right? You reach a block. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. Are, are you very comfortable in, in all the different types of run schemes that the Giants are going to run? Did you all do all that stuff during your time in Minnesota at some point? Uh, a little bit here and there. We ran some gap. Ran a lot, we were a lot of zone. A lot of we're, zone, right? We're, That's what I thought. Yeah, we were a big zone team. So inside zone, outside zone, mid zone. Um, you name it, <laughs> we ran it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's been going good. Um, I've been, uh, like I said, the guys in the room, um, Coach Bobby Johnson, been great uh, to get me adjusted to things, caught me up, and uh, just being there for me. So, yeah. John Michael, good stuff, man. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. We thank John Michael Schmitz for joining us, giving fans a little bit more of an idea of what's going on 
with that dead ball snap. Remember, folks, it's just in shotgun. It's not under center. So that's why I think it's a little bit of an overblown deal and it's not that important uh, because when he's under center, he's snapping it with the laces, and shotgun, it doesn't have as much of an impact because the ball's flying through the air uh, multiple feet anyway. So hope you got some good insight from John Michael Schmitz. Really nice kid. Uh, Hassenhauer, Bredesen, Azuda, Lemieux, and Glowinski as well. We thank all of them for joining us on this edition of the Giants Huddle Podcast. We'll see you next time, everyone. 